Hey everyone, this is Alex, USA Days. So here's the comment I want to answer to. During this layoff spree that we're facing now, is it still realistic to find a QA tester job? My wife has finished one of the manual testing courses recently, but she does not want to talk about it. I believe because she's struggling to find a way to get a job. What do you think? Is there still a chance for finding jobs in this field? All right. So uh, the market overall tech market is hard for the last year and a half with the lays uh, of layers of layoffs, uh, developers and QAs, you know, a lot of jobs got cut, but it is much better than three months ago. So starting February, we at least I personally see a lot more interest uh, from recruiters that are reaching out. And I think because the the budgeting phase passed, that's the beginning of the year, uh, we're kind of into the hiring phase, even though it's not maybe not as grand in 2020, but it it is still a hiring phase. So companies are getting more people on board to work on their projects. Uh, I will also add that I'll be switching jobs pretty much very soon. It's not going to be immediately reflected on the LinkedIn. It takes some time to get reflected, but I went out on the market. I went through a series of interviews and I got a new job. At some point you will see my LinkedIn will get updated with a new position. So I know how it is right now. Okay. Uh, what I can tell you, if you just finished the manual course and you are struggling to find a position, you have to do a couple of things. First of all, you need to add uh, more experience on your resume. How do you do that? Well, either the course should be offering you some sort of internship or you go get a freelance job. Uh, try U-Test. I have a video on it. Get some freelance going and put it on your resume saying like I was working on a freelance project. Uh, it, it is important to have uh, you know that experience available, visible. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing, what I've noticed throughout my search for QA positions, that remote is not as popular as it was a couple of years back when the, the whole thing was going on, right? Right now, there are some remote positions, but there are a lot of candidates that are looking for remote jobs. So you might have like hundreds of applications when a remote job becomes available. Uh, how I was able to find a job? Well, you should start looking for hybrid positions. So you go to an office for a day or two, maybe once a week, maybe, I don't know, once a month, whatever the deal is, but you go and find your local tech companies that are hiring. You have a lot more results uh, in getting those jobs. It's a lot more possible than trying to find a remote job across the United States. I'm not saying you shouldn't be looking for a completely remote position all across the, uh, the United States, but your focus should be shifting to what is available in your area and maybe Maybe, uh, you know, being open to relocating. If asked, if you find something local in a state nearby to you and you're willing to move, I don't know if you live in rent, months to months payment on the rent, maybe you can go and move and get a job there. Okay, not, in, not everyone in this position, but the point is I've noticed the jobs are moving into hybrid and in office jobs like they were before the 2020. Okay. Uh, Another point that I want to make when the market was hot, I was like, don't really go to recruiters, go directly to the companies and, you know, find the jobs on the web pages, look the posting where you have like an internal recruiter. Right now, I don't think that's the case. Uh, find a good recruiter, find a couple good recruiters, make sure that they send you different positions, not the same ones. So if they represent you, there's no conflict between recruiters. Uh, but it is important to have a really good recruiter that can help you out. Talk to someone who already maybe hired people in that same company. They have an ongoing relationship with the company that you're going for. Uh, talk with the recruiter, find a good one that is helping you, that will be able to look at your resume, talk about uh, the things that should be improved on your resume, if something looks off. Uh, we'll be able to help you out with the whole uh, interview process, what to expect from the interview and so on. So right now I'm a lot more open to recruiters than I was three, four years back, just because of the market. And genuinely, you know, uh, recruiters best interest is to get you hired. Even though the recruiter will get the cut of your pay, they're still not going to get paid until you are hired. So uh, one thing though, 
that I will say you about working with recruiters, just make sure that it is a legit company. It is a legit recruiter. Uh, if someone just sends you an email asking for all of your information, like your first name, last name, your social, your address, all of that stuff, just fill, fill out this questionnaire with hundreds of things on it. Uh, most likely it's going to be a scam, right? So make sure you're talking with a real person. Uh, make sure it is a real company. And when talk about recruiting, you know, don't send them a social or any personal information that, you know, could compromise you, like, I don't know, checking account, stuff like that. First name, last name, sure. Uh, address, yeah, sure. For the hiring purposes, your resume and experience, sure. Social, uh, you can tell them that you'll put your social in the system after you know you go through the interview process and you will talk to someone in the company that you're going to be hired in. Your work authorization, I mean, if you, if you have work authorization, you can say, I have a work authorization, that should be enough. Uh, US citizen, sure. Green card, sure. But uh, also having work authorization, you can say I have work authorization. It should be good to go. You're not required to give them your social. And if someone's asking you to do that, most likely they're just trying to collect information and to use it for whatever purposes later on. So yeah, work with recruiters. Start searching for hybrid jobs. Prioritize on hybrid jobs and local jobs, local postings. Consider uh, being open to moving to another state. Uh, have additional experience added from freelance on your resume. Uh, what is also important is to build your LinkedIn profile. Make sure you know you have a profile that the person can go to and understand your experience, what you've been doing, what are your skills, what things you've been using. That's very important. Uh, definitely go through a couple of interviews, just even if it's a remote position somewhere and you're not going to join, just to go and get the interviewing experience. You have to go and try three, four, five, six, seven interviews to understand the questions, write down the questions that, you know, uh, you didn't know the answer to, find the answer, write it down as well, get prepared better for the next one. Uh, and with all that being said, also... So a lot of positions are now saying like automation queue engineers, but still the reality of things is you're going to get hired as a QA engineer, maybe with some automation is in the job description, but 90% of the time you're going to be doing tons of manual stuff. Automation is going to be really small part of it, if any at all. Many companies just put that they need someone who is... Um, pretty much available to get into automation, but when they join, especially smaller startups, a lot of things you're gonna still be doing whatever manual queue engineers do it. Writing test cases, going through test cases, filing bugs, all of that things. Testing the features that are being released. So yes, there is automation on the job description. So spend, spend five days. Listen, okay, spend a week. You are a manual queue engineer right now, spend a week go on my channel, find the playlist on JavaScript for testers, go through that playlist and do practice JavaScript, and then go to the playlist about Playwright and go to the Playwright uh, playlist as well. So you have JavaScript and you have Playwright automation added to your resume. And here you go, your manual queue engineer with automation experience. Just spend a week, add the tool uh, to your skill set. That's it. You know, that's going to be uh, a next step, uh, two heads higher than everyone else, which just says manual only. You can say uh, QA engineer, put some automation on your resume. You don't have to even specify title automation QA engineer, so just says QA engineer. And you have JavaScript and you have a playwright tool uh, on your tool set for automation. You can speak about them. You can show that, you know, you've done automation. Maybe you can show the project that we'll be going through and doing, or you can automate something by yourself, just like a side tool project uh, that you'll have a repository you can show uh, if needed during the interview saying, hey, I've done this, I can automate a web page. Uh, that that will be good enough for half of the jobs that saying that they looking for someone who knows automation. Because most of them just gonna hire you and you will be doing the same manual QA stuff. Just kind of the bar uh, got higher, uh, to find the candidates, right? But the actual job, uh, the duties you'll be doing pretty much are the same. 
there's not much change unless the job is really specifically looking for like an automation automation engineer um, it's the same thing right okay so hopefully this helps uh, let me know what do you think uh, about the information in the comments this was alex usa days and bye bye